Welcome to another episode of the Cosign Conversations Podcast. I'm your host, KG. Cosign Conversations Podcast, we interview entrepreneurs, creators, professionals, executives, and chefs who we co-sign and want to shine within our community. Uh, today, we have the esteemed pleasure of interviewing Chef Keenan here in Houston, Texas at Kiss Vibe uh, Kiss. Vibes Dining. Am I correct? Vibe Dining, yeah. Vibes Dining. Great. It's a new term <laughs> that they created. Yeah. Kids, kids Vibe Dining. And uh, a little secret, I've actually been here before. Well, of course, in Dallas, you guys know we've done stuff in Dallas, but in Houston, uh, I attended um, a private tasting, which, my God, <laughs> those empanada oxtail. Yeah. I mean, the, the oxtail empanadas. Yeah. I've been talking about that since that day, brother. Yeah, the crazy thing is, uh, it it been in my head, and I wanted to do something different for you guys. Right. So when I came in, uh, I told our GM, I said, you know what, I'm going to change something. Mm-hmm. And I, literally the hour before you guys got here, I put those together. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. What, what's your creative process like when it comes to that? I definitely want to get to your story, but I got to talk about the Infinitas oh, first. So, process, <laughs> man. so your creative process of making something like that, because I'm Panamanian. So mm-hmm. like I come from Caribbean, a lot of food. I had many different types of empanadas. Yeah. I've never had oxtail empanadas yeah. before. And I told my mom, what are we doing? So the, <laughs> the crazy thing is, is I actually dream about food. Oh, wow. So um, it's weird. Things will come to me um, when I'm trying to force it. Mm. <sighs> I, I'll drive myself crazy, but when I finally stop thinking about it, allow myself to relax. Right. Um. Usually in my sleep, I wake up, idea, and so I'm jotting stuff down. Oh wow. So yeah, no. Um. I probably come up. Recipe wise, I probably have a little over three thousand recipes. Oh wow. If I'm being honest, now. Some of them were great. Some of them, for me, were not so great. And, but I do, I had to let people try them. And it's, oh, this is really good. I'm like, really? Yeah. So so the process is, um, yeah, I, I don't force it. I yeah. just kind of try to let it come to me. But the upside is, is I've worked at a lot of different places, and that was intentionally. Right. So that I can learn. And uh, to date, I can prepare probably 20 different cuisines. So I have a lot to pull, uh, pull from. Right. So yeah, that's my process. So just <laughs> what's in here. Nah, that's uh, cool. Most dishes I can taste before I even make it. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's like on some, some you know, when you, when you think about music artists, they say like they dream about lyrics, they think about lyrics mm-hmm. and it just comes to them. It's like, it's like being a visionary. Yeah. Right? That's like a different type of skill. That means you're made to do this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to be honest, though, it wasn't it wasn't what I was going to school for. I heard about that. So you're going to school with yeah. be a psychologist. Yeah, I was, so, I was, psychology, I was, sociology. I was studying psychology and sociology. Um, and that's when I got I got really sick. Okay. Um, I didn't know what was going on. I had to drop out of school. When they finally figured it out, mm. I had gotten so so sick. I had dropped from like a hundred and sixty five pounds, uh, solid muscle. I was a track and field athlete, okay. um, down to one hundred and ten pounds, skin wow. and, uh, literally almost skin and bones. Right. Um, when they finally started to turn things around a little bit, I still had to make money. I had to support my um, my two twin babies that had just yeah. come along in and college. So, yeah. Oh wow. And so I got in the kitchen. I got in the kitchen and started working. Uh, my dad's a chef. Okay. So he got me, he literally got me a job as a dishwasher. And he said, this is what we have available. Mm. You have to come in and work your way up. And in four years, I became his boss. Wow. You yeah. your dad's boss? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm really. Still tr- his boss to this day. <laughs> <laughs> so really a true starter from the bottom. Now we're here at Story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so in four years, you went from a dishwasher to a sous chef and became your, your dad's boss. Right. <laughs> How did that trajectory happen so fast? Like, what does it normally take to, to for somebody to become a sous chef? So, there's culinary. Um, traditionally, people go to culinary school, right? right? Um, I'll be honest. After I made the sous chef, I tried culinary school. Oh, I'm not learning anything here. The most I learned how to do is make a good omelet. <laughs> um, because the business side, I had, I had already learned. Okay. Uh, From your dad or just experience? Just or? experience. Right. Or like I said, I, I had been working in little small places as a teenager. Right. You know, like KFC and things like that. And you watch and you see things because my family, they're just cooks. Right. Um, and so going to culinary school was like going backward to me. I said, I need to learn. And so that's the first step most chefs take. Um, I'll tell anybody 
if I'm being honest, run the other way. Mm. Uh, I feel like culinary school it just kind of stifles you. Okay. Um. So there's culinary school. Then you go work as a cook, and you try to work your way up. Some people try to get into some of the best restaurants. Right. You get those who actually travel overseas to get into some of the best restaurants. Right. And I told myself, you know what? One, I can't afford to do it. I got two little girls to take care of. Right. So my process was just work and learn, work okay. and learn. And I absorbed everything I could as fast as I could. Um, my When I went into any kitchen, I told the executive chef, I want your job. Mm. Did they feel? Uh, oh, yeah, threatened. <laughs> yeah. They did. Threatened. Okay. Uh, because you come in with a um, certain level of understanding and talent. Right. And I've I've been fired from uh, jobs because I was so because of my talent and ambition. Now, mind you, I did some things that were a little <laughs> out of line. I'm not gonna lie to you. Let's you don't go, you don't go into a restaurant and change another chef's uh, uh, recipe. Gotcha. Uh, so, what was it better? Did you make it better? Oh, so here's the story. <laughs> uh, I, I, I made the dish. I said, "Hey, chef." He, he said, "Hey, did you write down your whole the recipe process and everything right. you know, before you sent that out to the table?" I'm thinking, yeah, I'm like, he's about to be proud of me. He yeah. said, man, this is a great dish. It's better than mine. Mm. He said, unfortunately, I can't keep it. Wow. I was like, why? He said, you sent that out to the table without my approval. Mm. And he said, you may not understand it now because you're young. But he said, that's a level of disrespect. No chef can tolerate it. Mm. So let me ask you this. Uh, if somebody that's to you today, would you fire them? Yes. Okay. I sure as hell will. Okay. So you, so you learn from it. So yeah. you got fired, but you learn from that process. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, he, it, and, you know, he set me down. He said, you talented. Um, keep pushing. And this was a chef who had taken me uh, under his wing. Okay. He said, he said, I'm proud of you. He said, but I can't keep you, can you? Because mm. uh, he said, what's going to happen is it's going to turn into this power struggle between us. Right. Because you have these ideas and you want to execute them, mm. but you can't do them in this kitchen. Mm. And so, um, but he gave me a great recommendation. Uh, went on to the next job, but I took that lesson with me. And okay. that's what it's been for me from kitchen to kitchen, taking those lessons. Got you. So, I feel like your story is one who's somebody who's triumphed over adversity. Like you said, you got okay. sick in school. Yeah. You went from, you know, kitchen to kitchen. You're very talented and that does threaten people. Uh, what would you say is like, outside of that, has been something you learned, you know, through the kitchen or life experiences that made you, you know, the top tier um, entrepreneurship that you are today? Um, you know, my biggest lesson is, um, or the thing I learned is things are going to get really hard mm -hmm. um, but for you to progress, but don't let those, don't let those things discourage you. Okay. Because there were a lot of moments in my career where I was like, you know what? Let me just step away from this. Right. Um, I actually went back to school, finished finished my degree, mm -hmm. um, applied to grad school. Okay. And I was like, you know what? I love psychology. I love sociology. I love being in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. and that's where I started doing more research. Okay. And I found... Um, I uh, came across um, food psychology. Okay, yeah, I wanted to talk on that. Yeah, food psychology. <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah. There's a whole field in the food psychology? Mm -hmm. And as I started diving into it, learning all these things about nostalgia mm -hmm. and um, perception and things like that, my mind started reeling and turning mm -hmm. uh, to the point, like some some of the things that are up here I haven't tried yet to this day, okay. which I know I won't be able to try until I open my own venue. Okay. Um, and then that's where I started uh, doing more studying and I got into molecular gastronomy. What's that for those uh, who don't know? Because I don't know. So <laughs> my, my, when people think molecular gastronomy, yeah. they think... Um, Oh, the smoke and mirrors, okay. the things, the things we do to make it flashy. Okay. But really, it's it's just that molecular. Okay. So like So this. it's pairing, it's, okay. it's pairing food on a molecular level. Okay. Uh and the way in the way they complement each other mm -hmm. uh and, and, and come together to create something unique. Right. Uh, I always tell people, uh the, the one dish I, um the first dish I ever tried was a um it was a dessert. Okay. It was White chocolate, uh, uh, a mango. Um, I took a mango puree, turned it to gelatin, okay. and topped it with caviar. Oh wow! And when I say people went crazy for this, because you get that uh, 
you get that creaminess from the chocolate, right. that sweetness from the mango, and then that saltiness from the uh, caviar. Mm -hmm. It's like perfect umami. Okay. And when I say people went crazy for this dish, uh, I'll make it whenever I can with <laughs> people because they'll look at me like, yeah. nah, well, you I put don't that see together. that working. Yeah. But yeah, it works. And so uh, I have a book this thick right. just on how to pair different mm. different foods and i'll dig into it every now and then just so that i can kind of like with the um oxtail uh em empanada uh i could really dig into that recipe yeah. for you guys but there, there were certain things that came together for that dish mm. up here that made it work and, and, and made it really good just to what's on the inside the way we um the, the way we prepare the uh, empanada so what i didn't tell you guys that day okay. is those empanadas were fried in duck fat what? Yeah. I've never had duck fat. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know something existed. <laughs> they, 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 they were fried in duck fat. Okay. Just, just so when I put that chimichurri on it and everything that was That's going. what it was. Yeah, yeah that chimichurri. Yeah. I did, yeah. I think it was next level, man. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was definitely so, next level. Yeah. Now, amazing story, man. But I also want to talk about, and I feel like people don't really dive into this, is, you know, the the business of being a chef right you see the creative side and you get to explore but there's a lot of business that goes behind it right <laughs> a lot. can you share like a lot of things that people don't see that want to enter like the culinary space become an executive chef oh become yeah a sous definitely chef? so um in my career i've learned you have does your chef that's creative mm -hmm. and your chef that knows the business side right yeah. everybody I always tell you you rarely get that chef that knows both, both. yeah and so when I meet people and they see you creative and you know the business side, mm -hmm. my phone is just blowing up mm -hmm. uh, because I actually consult okay. as well. So uh, on the business side, so when we go into a restaurant, and it's just to give you a um, peek behind the curtain. Okay. When you look at your menu, you see everything on there. It looks great. And you see prices, right? Right. There's there's a whole method and science behind it because you have to create a menu that not only looks good, tastes good, but it's profitable mm. so that you can pay your staff, pay your vendors, maintain costs, keep the lights, lights on, on and all that. So you have to create a balanced menu. Mm. Okay. And so that's where menu design comes in. So it's almost like being a mad scientist back there. So I'm costing things out. Okay. Seeing how that can work or saying, hey, how can I get the most use out of my lamb chops? Right. OK. So when we cut our lamb chops, their trimmings left over. I don't want to discard that. Right. I need to make the money on that. OK. So while I do have lamb chops on my menu, I also have a, a lamb and wagyu meatball. OK. Because because we cut our own steaks as well. And there's trimmings left over. Gotcha. So I put the two together and created something really nice using using a lot of different flavors from uh, from Africa. Gotcha. And so, yeah. So that's where you get my uh, Cape, Cape Male meatballs. OK. So let me ask you this from a business perspective. From what you've seen, what's what item would you push the most within? I say one is a creative and one is a business um, business mind. Right. The one that people like the most, want the most, may not be the most profitable mm -hmm. or the item that's the most profitable. So it depends on how you want to run your business, too. OK. Some places look, OK, I want to make money on volume. OK. So they don't care about the margins. Mm -hmm. They say, hey, we can make 50 percent, mm -hmm. but we can achieve the volume we want. Right. I don't care if uh, we make a lot of money on the product. Okay. But me, I like margins. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just a safe space for me. Right. And I'll be honest, uh, when I see people who operate like that, I get worried and I say, look, man, uh, it's a slippery slope. Yeah. Uh, because if you slow down, mm -hmm. then you can't support the business. Mm, true. So it's, it's always marketing and promoting something. something. It's, it's always that anyway. For sure. But what if we have something like another COVID? Right. Yeah. So I look at the margins. Um, and I try to keep my plate like plate cost at about 30%. Okay. Uh, that puts me at a 70% uh, margin. We can account for things like comps, voids, waste, okay. and things like that. My kitchen, though, we're almost down to zero waste. Oh, wow. Yeah, zero waste. We mm -hmm. use everything. Um, so yeah, I prefer the margins. That way I know the business can support itself. Mm -hmm. Um, it can support staff and, and 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 just take care of it so we can grow. Gotcha. Uh, the volume side, 
that's like buffets and stuff. Okay. But when have you ever seen a buffet grow and right. just maintain itself? You still have a few golden corrals out there, right? Ooh, I ain't thinking about that. You're yeah. right. Mm-hmm. Only ones I can think of that really sustain are our, mm-hmm. our Asian buffets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But 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 those ingredients are cheap, right? Okay. So on an Asian dish, you might say, and that's because I'm heavily in Asian food mm-hmm. too. On an Asian dish, you might see a um, 12% plate, plate cost. Mm-hmm. Cause like sushi, like you're using high grade fish, right? right? But when you think about the amount that's actually in there, mm-hmm. you're making a good profit on yeah. that, man. Yeah, you're making a lot off that yeah. one piece of fish. And, and, and that's <laughs> that's like I have a whole con sushi concept. Okay. So just because I know the the, the margins on it, okay. uh, same thing with um, a lot of a lot of Latin cuisines, not necessarily a Latin steakhouse. Right, right. Uh, because you're gonna spend a lot of money on steak, but just uh, Latin Latin fusion. Oh yeah. Yeah, the profit margins are, are great. It's a lot of rice. Yeah. Uh-huh. And you can still use premium ingredients for sure. Now, believe it or not, when you say rice, there are some premium rice rices out there. Man, give me some, a lot of money. Man, man. Give me some jasmine rice. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> jasmine rice, I'm good. Hey, but you know, um, for me, it's just finding a way to uh, one create that perceived value mm-hmm. and still keep it profitable. Gotcha. You know, gotcha. make make the customer happy, mm-hmm. but it's still profitable. Yeah. So you might put saffron in a dish. If you oh, saffron, it's not cheap. All right. Uh, me, I got five ounces of saffron sitting in the house. That's five hundred dollars worth the oh. worth the uh, worth the ingredients right there. Oh, wow. But just a little bit goes a long way, For especially sure. especially when you're developing a dish and you're sending it out to the public. So, nah, it's yeah. amazing. Y'all yeah. done an amazing job here um, here at Kiss. What kind of attracted you to come here? So, um, I was at um, another venue. Um, I didn't have to put in as much time. My staff was trained well. My okay. great sous chef, and so I was doing a lot of consulting. Okay, I ended up consulting for one of the investors. Okay, on a project they were working on. Um, I didn't want to take another job somewhere where I had to give so much commitment to it. Right. But I had heard about the Kiss brand. I had come in a few times. Um. No shade to anybody. Um, I thought the food. I thought the food was okay. Okay. Um, and the overall vibe and what they were trying to create. Right. I was like, this is interesting, and I had ideas just sparking off in my head when I came in. So then I had um, the big guys. We call them the big guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, reach out to me and say, hey, can you come here and take a look at some things for us? I did. I saw there were a lot of areas for improvement. Mm-hmm. Um. Gave them some suggestions just as a console. Right. And then uh, went back to my job eight months later. They called and offered me the job. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I said, you know what? I don't want to take another job, right. but I, I can execute all these ideas I had. Sure. Um, I'm not finished yet. Um, I actually have the new menu I'm working on. Okay. Uh, yeah. Also, also know that you're what? If you have you already created your own hospitality group or you're in a yes, process? Yes, I do have my own hospitality group. Okay. Yes, I do. Okay. Yes, I do. So, I guess from from looking outside, looking in, are you able to manage both, or is it something that you know in the future you want to make sure you kind of do full time? Um. Again, that comes down to building a good team, right? Right. Uh, could I manage both? Um, I'm ambitious enough to try. Okay. Um, I, I do. I have about uh, four people that work for me now. Okay. Uh, that line up contracts and things like that, and I more or less right now just guide them because I'm here about. <laughs> yeah, because I'm here about um, 55, 60 hours a week, but I am able to kind of dig into things and uh, keep things. I have another chef that works for me. Uh, my sous chef right now is consulting on uh, two Latin concepts. Okay, we love so, Latin food. <laughs> so, so yeah. Uh, now, once I start opening my own concepts, if I can open them in partnership with the group, okay, which is a conversation I had when I started here. I'd stay on. Got you. I'd be on. When you when you started here, did you have that in mind? Like, okay, look, yeah, I could work yeah, here. Yeah, that, that was my first conversation. Okay, uh, with the with the owners when I talk to them, I say, hey, this is what I'm looking for. Um, if at some point we can sit down and have that conversation, right? I, I, 
be happy to. Yeah. Uh, but right now, Kiss, uh, Kiss is a growing brand. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm happy to be at the startup because we also have our location in Dallas. Right. We're so we're doing events in Dallas. So the yeah. one in Dallas. So I'm in Dallas, um, maybe two times a month. Okay. Y'all let uh, us know, man. We're gonna, right downtown, so we always go to Kiss in Dallas. Oh wow! Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, you guys can come meet the team there, the chef there, uh, and we already have a space in Miami. Oh. That's gonna be yeah. a vibe. Yeah. And you know, once you do Miami, you do Miami well, yeah. there's Vegas, <laughs> yeah, New York, Chicago. After that, the only other place to go is take it overseas. Yeah, overseas. Nah. And so I, would I like to be a part of that? Yeah. I would. I definitely would. So that's awesome. that'll really give me the chance to, you know, flex a little bit. Nah, that's awesome, man. And then the upside, the thing I do like about this is um it caters to to the culture. All right. So um, even though it's not this style of food, it's not mm -hmm. the only thing, the only cuisine I can prepare. I can, I feel like I can bring more to it. Gotcha. Um, that's where we get into the new menu. Mm. Can you share smiles on the new menu? So the new menu is um, it's not a new concept to me. They just kind of gave a turn to it. They okay. call it a chaos menu. OK, it's interesting. Yeah. So what a chaos menu is, is where you take dishes that are typically nostalgic to a culture. OK. And you bring nuances of other cuisines into it to okay. give it that flair. But I'm also taking it a step further and adding that molecular astronomy okay. uh, piece to it. Um, some people, a lot of people say, oh, no, that's just fusion. OK. Or whatever you want to call, <laughs> call it, but um, no, it's, this is purely pure chaos menu. Taking every idea that's up here and playing with it to see how it okay. works. I want, I want, I want every bite to be that wow factor. Mm. Okay. So if 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 it's I every moment, if I can do that, um, I'm not saying I may be, I may, I can achieve it with every dish because it's such a large menu, right? Right. Um, if I can achieve that with four or five dishes on it, okay. If that's all anybody comes for, all right. Okay. Give us the one you're most excited about. Actually, it is that oxtail empanada. I told ya. <laughs> uh, I'm really excited about that. I'm still playing with it just a little. Okay. I have a bayou shrimp. It was on the menu when I got here, but I didn't like it. Um, so I revamped it, and I've been just kind of sending it out okay. and getting a lot of great feedback. So I'm excited about that one. Um. So I have a dish on them. It's called a soul for real. Soul for real. Yeah, but it's not what you think. Okay. So uh, it's a Korean. It's a, a Korean uh, beef barbecue rib. Okay. But when it's spelled, it's spelled soul like the country soul. Oh, so S E O. Yeah. Okay. Hyphen full. Okay. And it comes with uh, the the barbecue sauce we make in here, one hundred percent from scratch. I'm not going to get into it, <laughs> but when you taste it, yeah. you're like wow, because I ran it as a special. And we sold out of it every night. Oh, we wow. ran it. But it's paired with a, uh, a kimchi coleslaw. Mm. And then a um, little sesame, green onions. And then we put it with a with a uh, good old southern baked mac and cheese. Oh, man. Make me hungry right yeah. now. <laughs> so, you know, we got a lot of great feedback on it. The key to it is, though, I have to be, we have to stick to the process. Because as you know, beef ribs can cook and get pretty, um, they can be pretty tough if you don't cook right, them right. Mm -hmm. So that's that, that's the only part I have to train my staff well mm -hmm. on because we because first they they um, brine and marinate for twenty four hours okay. and then they go on the smoker and then they uh and, and then we finish them off in the oven okay fully prepared so, that's amazing yeah. man so I know time is money so I want to ask you one more question um, our our community is full of entrepreneurs and creators right yeah. somebody's going to watch this and get inspired to you know follow your path follow the group's path right but it's not easy even if you provide even if you lay out the full blueprint doesn't mean that somebody can actually go yeah. and do the same thing right but for somebody who has been playing with an idea in their head like hey i want to try like a latin concept but i am not a chef right mm -hmm. what steps would you give them to just go out there and at least try it um i'm i'm heavy on research okay uh do your research um develop it up here develop it on paper Put the plan together and then reach out, put that team together that can help you execute it because you can't do it by yourself. Got you. 
Uh, um, and that would consist of one for sure a consultant. Yeah, consultant. Okay. Yeah, you can reach out to a consultant, or if there's if there are those in your network um, that you know, one hundred percent. Because uh, again, um, the one thing I've learned in this industry is there are people who say they know what they yeah. they're doing and then not necessarily. Um, so do your homework, get references. Ah, that part. Um, yeah, uh, just on everything from the menu design to the the way you design mm-hmm. your um, your venue, yeah, yeah. who your contractors are, mm-hmm. like 100% research, man. Right? Okay. As long as you, I'm not saying do five years worth of research, research because yeah. <laughs> it, it's, it's a, it turns into that thing, I'm always doing preparation but never executing. Right. So do your research and then execute, man. Once you're comfortable, yeah. execute. There will be some pitfalls. Mm-hmm. You will make mistakes. Um, there'll be times when you're discouraged, but again, just persevere and keep pushing. Nah, for keep sure. Pushing. Of course, Chef Keenan at Cosign, we co-sign you, but I want to give you this opportunity since we are called Cosign. Has there been anybody within your career that co-signed you maybe early on that kind of helped you get to this part of your journey, or your career, that really helped uplift you, support, advocate for you, that you would like to publicly give them their flowers? Oh, I've had several. Um, one is Chef Bart who um, early on saw I had talent. Um, I thought in the kitchen I was always messing up. Right. But he pulled me to the side. He said, I see you have a natural talent and I want to help with that. Uh, there's also Chef Mark Carnage. Okay. Um, I worked with him at Air Mark, Black Chef. I was like, well, when he walked in the room, I was just like, wow. Yeah, th- different you know, it, it was a little intimidating, like even when he just spoke to you. Yeah. Um, I was, this man, just in the way he spoke, the way he carried himself, commanded respect. Right. I didn't get to work a lot of hands on with him, but just watching him, I'm like, man, I want to be like that. Yeah. And then there's um, one of the most creative chefs. Um, I know also another black chef, um, Chef uh, Giovanni King. Okay. Um, working under him was a different experience, but I appreciate it. Because I would watch him just literally take stuff and come up with something. Yeah. I was like, wow, this is great. Yeah. And so um, I was like, you know what? I want to be that. Yeah. I don't want to have to stand there and think it through and all that. I just want to put together and it's great. To the point now, I'm just creating all day. Here, guys, try this. Tell me what you think. Yeah. Like last night, I did a, um, I did an Asian-inspired ceviche. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the guys in my kitchen are Latin. He's like, that's not ceviche. <laughs> that's not ceviche. Yeah. It's supposed to be with lime juice, this and that. Yeah. And I said, I bet you it'd be the best ceviche you ever tasted. I did it with orange juice, a white soy sauce, um, sesame oil, mm-hmm. and then finished it out with a red chili oil. And they ran around the kitchen. All right, shit. Sure. <laughs> right. I said, look, just come give me my pot, man. I said, it's yeah. ceviche. Yeah. So, yeah, um, those are the people who... Um, co-sign for me and uh you know really lifted me up and uh to this day i can call on those people and say hey can we have a conversation man that's awesome man so you know we inspired by your journey definitely huge supporters of you and that kiss man um Thanks for the opportunity of letting sit down with you and share your story. Uh, okay. We at Cosign are worried about co-signing, you know, individuals who are making strides in their career. So, you know, if you guys enjoy this episode, please make sure you support Visit Kiss in Houston and Dallas. Let us know what your favorite dish is in the comments as well. Please make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe. Any last words, Chef Keenan? Um, I want to say this to any... Um, aspiring chef of color. Um, Don't worry about the naysayers. Mm. Do your thing. Just go crazy. Enjoy it. Enjoy the journey. Um, Enjoy the good times. Um, Even the bad times. They'll make you stronger. And like I said before, just keep pushing and persevering. Man, no better way to to conclude our interview like that. Like I said, please follow Chef Keenan. Please follow Kiss Houston. Until next time, y'all take it easy, and we'll continue to support y'all.